Welcome back, beautiful people of Earth. Today, this is probably one of the most requested videos that I get and probably some of the most requested questions that I get on a, all the social media things that I am on. This is the realest dating advice, the realest gay dating advice you're going to need. A lot of this is going to be dating in general. I will do my best to include stuff that pertains specifically to the gay, queer, community but in all honesty these almost all apply no matter who you are no matter how old you are um no matter who you're interested in this is just dating advice but gay dating advice sounds way more fun and i'm gay so it's advice coming from someone who's gay there you go i've actually made notes believe it or not i never do this for youtube videos but so I'm going to talk, I'm just going to read the headers and then I'm going to go into them just at the top of my head. So the first one that I put is be yourself. There's no point in pretending to be anyone else. This is difficult, <laughs> especially if you're just starting dating, especially if you're just starting gay dating, because not only are you just starting to date, but you're also coming to terms with your sexuality. You are, you know... This might be the first date you've ever been on, but it's also your first experience as being like an openly queer person. So it can be really hard to know your identity and to have a good vision of who you wanna be and what you wanna be. So I definitely think on some of my first dates that I was trying to project a certain image. Um, I was really scared of looking too gay or acting too gay. Um, and that doesn't help. That like if you're trying to find somebody that you will spend the rest of your life with or at least some time with, it makes no sense to sort of pretend to be somebody you're not or pretend to like things that you don't like. And it is absolutely okay to go on a date with somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, have you watched this TV show? Like, it's so good. I love it so much. And for you to say, oh no, I haven't watched it. Like, that's not really something that I usually watch. That's okay. That that shouldn't kill a date. If If somebody hears that you don't you're not into a certain show if that's the reason that they're not wanting to go on a date with you you need to get out of there asap because that's not enough that's not a good enough reason to not be involved so <clears throat> i know it's hard especially if you're queer especially if you're just coming out of the closet or if you're just starting to experiment and find out who you are i know that it is very difficult it is stressful it is not fun but it is so important that you try and be as true to yourself as you physically can be and that that is the most important thing like you really cannot do anything better than that so my advice be yourself find out what you like don't be a pushover don't don't just agree blindlessly with somebody when you're on a date with them um you need to really find out who they are and they need to really find out who you are because you might be able to fake like a good impression <clears throat> you might be able to fake a few dates going on with somebody but sooner or later the truth comes out and the person will feel really sort of betrayed or shocked or they'll be like I feel like I don't even know you because they don't because you haven't given them the honest um sort of who you are be yourself no point in pretending there you go um <clears throat> the next one be open and upfront about what you're looking for this does not mean you talk about getting married and how many children you want to have and if you're going to live in the country or you're going to buy a nice place in the city. No, I'm talking about being open and upfront about your intentions with dating. So especially in the queer community, there is a lot of experimentation. There's a lot of people trying to figure out what they're into. There's a lot of, you know, just having fun, casual fun, you know, friends with benefits, all of that stuff. And if that's something you're interested in, that needs to be stated really quick. It should be in your Tinder profile. It should be a conversation you have pretty early on, first or second date for sure. And, you know, because there there really are two different kinds of people um, looking at dating. There are the long-term people who are looking to find the person that they're going to be sitting on the porch with in 60 years. And there are the people just looking for fun or, you know, they know that they are moving away to college soon or... You know, they're not going to be living in this town forever and they're just looking for some fun. They're looking for a connection now. They're not really thinking about the future in long-term mindset. And so 
you need to figure out which one you are and then only date people who are looking for the same thing because I don't care if you get hung up on some gorgeous boy, like some tall, dark and handsome, gorgeous boy who you just become absolutely obsessed with. If he's not looking for what you're looking for, you got to move on. Nobody is that good. I'm sorry. Nobody is. You can romanticize somebody until the cows come home, but there is no point in starting something with someone who is not never going to be there. Okay. You're going to break your heart. That's what leads to situationships. That's what leads to all kinds of problems in dating. So first or second date, you guys need to establish what you're looking for. And it's so, it's completely okay. Do not let anybody tell you that it's not okay just to have fun and to experiment and to just date casually. That's totally fine. As long as both of you know that's what you're doing. And there is nothing wrong with wanting to be in a committed monogamous relationship. If you want that, go for it. Okay? Now, <clears throat> that's, that's point two. Number three is do not look for somebody to complete you. I even put it in brackets. Um, this is a big one. Um, I have recently been talking about this quite a bit on social media, but um, I feel like I am a pretty self-sufficient human being. You know, I need, I, I need a pick me up now and then. I need help from my family. I need to talk to my friends occasionally. Um, you know, I have to work for a living. I have to go and get food that other people produced. So I'm not self-sufficient in that way. However, I do not need somebody to complete my life. I have a great system. I have amazing friends and family in my support system. I am self-sufficient. I run my life. I do what I need to do. I get most of the bills paid uh, when they should be. So I am not looking for somebody <clears throat> to complete me financially, emotionally, morally, any of that's physically, I, I don't need, I don't need anybody. I would like somebody, but I do not need somebody to come and fill some void in my life. I enjoy being single. I love what I do. I get to see my friends whenever I want. I get to enjoy what I want to enjoy. I can watch the TV shows, read the books that I want to read. I am not dependent on anybody and I never want to be. However, I would really love somebody to be able to join my life who I make their life a better thing. They make my life a better thing, but we are not dependent on each other 24 seven. It's fine to get sick and to break an ankle or something and to have a loved one take care of you and you know really show that they're there for you. It is not okay to use somebody as an emotional crutch or to use somebody as a way of filling a void or you know somebody to hold while you fall asleep. Because while those things are really nice and it's awesome to have somebody there for you, if you can't stand on your own, if that person disappears, you spiral out of control. Your life crumbles. And so it's not okay to use somebody like that. It's not okay to do that to someone and to make them, it's not okay to be that crutch. It's not okay to just, you know, make this person completely dependent on you. Um, it doesn't lead to a, a, a healthy and stable relationship. If you, if you two are really complimentary and you compliment each other super well and your weaknesses and your strengths are opposite, so you like form a great, great bond, that's awesome. But at the end of the day, if one of you can't survive without the other, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. This isn't, this isn't a romantic comedy. This isn't some fairy tale ending. Um, you need to be constantly improving and working on yourself, working on your mental health, working on what you can do to be a better person. And the other person should be doing the exact same thing. Um, I used to, I used to get like, I would gain like 35 pounds anytime I got into a relationship because I was willing to compromise my health in terms of going out to eat all the time and getting fast food and not exercising just because my partner was like, well, I don't want to go to the gym. And then I'd be like, okay, well, I'm not going to leave you. No, now I'm like, okay, like I'm going to the gym. If you want to come great, but if not, I'll see you in two hours. So um, nobody needs to complete me and I wouldn't want to try and complete somebody else. I, I, would, I would like to think that when I find somebody, that person is a fully formed, emotionally intelligent human being that doesn't need me to complete them. So I think that's one of the reasons that I struggle personally with dating because especially my generation seems to, <coughs> um, I don't know, seems to really like desire that person to complete them. And I don't vibe with that at all. So yeah. Now, that was quite serious. But my next one, my next point is 
don't take it too seriously. So I think this is, I'm gonna take this in a few different ways. So the first way I'm gonna take this is don't take things too seriously in terms of all of the rules you're supposed to follow. So these rules are something are things like don't sleep with them until the fifth date, don't talk about kids, don't talk about marriage, don't talk about exes. Um, there's a whole bunch of these rules you're supposed to follow and everybody has different rules and your friends are going to say, oh, this is a rule, you can't do this or don't do this. That doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Um, sorry, I have a bit of a cough, so apologies for that. But it really doesn't matter. So don't take those things too seriously. Honestly, you are dating, you are supposed to be having fun. It's supposed to be an enjoyable time. If you go on a few dates with somebody and it's just not fun, stop. You know, just don't take it seriously. Don't work it up in your head. Don't overthink it because the dates should be fun. You know, your first five or six dates with somebody should just be enjoyable. And you should really just get to know this person and see how they are and see how they interact and see how they treat the waiters at the coffee shop you're going to, that kind of stuff. So the idea that you need to like take it super seriously and basically be like, I'm looking for my future husband. And if you don't meet this criteria on day one, you're out. No, like you have good judgment, hopefully, hopefully you have good judgment. But um, yeah, just allow yourself to like read the situation. Don't think about it too much. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. You kind of know, trust your judgment, trust your gut. Um, but again, don't take it seriously. You're dating, especially if you're, if you're like my age, if you're like in your like teens or 20s, like, what are you doing? Don't be serious. And hell, it doesn't it actually it doesn't even matter. If you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, what are you doing? Don't take it seriously. Just just enjoy. It should be fun. If it's not fun, don't do it again, right? Um, I've been on lots of first dates that weren't fun. And I've cut them short. Or I've just said, you know what? We are so different. We are not going to vibe. Sorry. And I don't take it too seriously. And hopefully they don't take it too seriously. So I think that's important. And just allow yourself to feel how you're going to feel. Um, this kind of goes, this, this is, I'll, this will be the final point and then I'll stop ranting for you guys and then I can listen to what you guys think. Um, but the final point is do not rush into anything ever. So I have, <coughs> apologies, I have gotten into relationships quickly in the past. It's happened once or twice. Um, do not, do not do this. Do not rush into a relationship. I have so many experiences, both personally and people I know in my life, who have gotten into relationships so incredibly quickly, so fast, without truly knowing the other person, and it almost always bites them in the butt. Um, if you want to build a steady, long-term, committed relationship, you need to take your time with dating. You need to date other people and see what you like, find out what you're into, um, the idea of rushing in, and I'm ta I, I'll be very specific. If you are dating, if you, from the first day you meet somebody, that is when you start dating somebody, okay? Like as soon as your first date starts, you are dating and you get to decide after the first date if you're gonna continue and then it keeps on going, right? Do not get into a committed relationship with somebody that you have only known for like a month or two months, okay? That might be controversial. You might say like, Jack, that's that's so dumb. I met my husband and we dated for a month and then we got engaged. Great, I'm glad it worked for you. Hopefully it still works and hopefully like it all works out until the very end. But don't advise people to do that. Do not recommend that people get into a committed relationship within a month. That is not enough time to learn each other's intricacies. That is not enough time to have communication and figure out if you two are truly compatible. Um, I really, this is the thing that annoys me the most about dating and certainly about gay dating is that relationships seem to be defined within a month of seeing each other. Um, all three of my relationships, we were seriously dating each other within a month or two months, and that is too quick. I can look back on those and say, yep, yeah, that was too quick. One of my relationships lasted almost three years. The other two lasted about a year each. And the idea that I knew that person well enough to say, yeah, let's get into a committed relationship after a month or two months 
is ridiculous. Um, and like I said, I know that there are stories that work out really well. Um, my grandparents got engaged within six weeks of dating and they have been together for 64 years, but that was back then. Dating is very different now. The culture is very different. And there's a lot of people that didn't stay together that that situation happened to. So the other thing I would say is why are you rushing? Why is there this sudden need to be in a committed relationship that quickly? Um, it, it really frustrates me. And it, like I said, it is one of those things that I really, it gives me the ick. So um, the other thing, the other added benefit of taking your time and not rushing is you get rid of the people that are just interested in you in the short term. So I, for myself, have like a minimum of like two to three months of dating someone committedly or like not committedly dating someone um, until we can have that talk about exclusivity. And like, I'm very upfront with people about like, yeah, I'm having a really great time with you. Um, I'm like, I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. And then if they ask the question like, oh, like, what do you think about being exclusive or dating? I'll say like, yeah, I'm definitely interested in, in being exclusive with you, but I need more time to like assess this and I'm not going to rush into anything like, you know, and if that person can't deal with me being open and honest about, yeah, I'm really enjoying my time with you, but I'm not going to be exclusive with you until we have had some real time to like be together. If they can't handle that, I don't want them in my life. If they're not willing to have that waiting period of really figuring out if we are compatible, I don't want them there. Like, I'm sorry. Like that is an absolute red line for me. Like if you are uncomfortable with the fact that we can see each other for three months and then talk about exclusivity, if that freaks you out and if you're like, no, that's way too much. Like I, I can't stand the idea of you going on other dates with people. Like, I'm sorry, but that's not an adult perspective. And I'm, I'm looking for like the person that's going to like bury me in the backyard. Um, I'm not looking for somebody who is just like wanting this quick fling or who is only interested in the here and now and all the fast paced stuff. Like I'm not interested. That's not my vibe. So please don't rush it. Um, you always have more time than you think you do. And when choose, like a relationship is one of the few decisions in your life that will really impact your life. You know, there are, there are a few decisions like, you know, what career you decide to go for, how you interact with people on a daily basis, um, choosing a partner to have a family with or be a family with. Um, there are a few decisions like that that impact your life that much. But your spouse, like the person that you are choosing to be with, that is one of the most important and critical like decisions you could make in your life. It can definitely determine whether you live a long and beautiful life or you do not. So it is not a decision to be taken lightly. It is not something that you just rush into based on, well, he makes me feel good. Okay, well, that's awesome. That's so good. I'm so glad he makes you feel good. But that is not a justification for committing yourself to somebody that you've only known for a month because that is not enough time. How long does it take you to forge a best friendship? You know, it takes years and best friendships can go in and disappear at any moment. So that is the most critical piece of advice in terms of like how it relates to LGBT dating and things like that. Um, we are a smaller community. You know, there is a lot less of us than there are of the straight people. Um, so I think that emphasizes why you need to take your time. You need to enjoy it. You need to not take it too seriously, you know. Um, I watched a video today on the benefits of dating other people at the same time. And you know what? There has some, there's some merit to that. I know some of you might absolutely recoil and be like, oh, that's disgusting, like dating people at the same time. But dating people at the same time, <coughs> sorry again, in this video, the girl was talking about how if you are able to just, you know, casually date a few people at the same time, you will be able to see the differences and it gives you a much better perspective on what you're looking for, what is attractive to you and what really resonates. It also allows you that sort of 
self-sufficiency because if one of them messages you and says hey like i'm sorry i'm just like you're not the you're not the one for me like your personality or like whatever it just doesn't work out you aren't devastated because you have other people who are interested in you who find you attractive and that allows you to put your energy into those people and not feel absolutely devastated when the one and only guy you were talking to breaks your heart and you know suddenly like it's a real problem and for someone like me who has a tendency to kind of romanticize and and think of the best in people um that's really good too because i'm not focusing solely on one human being um so it's definitely something that i'm i'm not necessarily experimenting with but it did make me pause and think pretty hard because the idea that oh like if i'm if i was like casually just going on some coffee dates with two or three people at least i'm not romanticizing one person in particular and so then my heart isn't broken i don't feel like absolutely in in smithereens if that person doesn't turn out to be the one so i don't know guys um i hope this was helpful um dating is hard i get that dating is really difficult especially in our our era of technology and there always seems to be someone better on the horizon for the person you're dating which sucks it's not fun but i hope that's helpful um <coughs> sorry again um please leave me your comments your questions i'm really happy to answer this is like the video to end all videos essentially this is one of the big ones that i think we're all inherently interested in and um yeah please know you will find somebody. Um, statistically, um, it will work out. And I can tell you spiritually, if you are looking for that energy, that energy will come home to you and it will be fulfilled. So um, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much. And like always, I will talk to you guys tomorrow.